Well, ladies and gentlemen, how are we? Welcome back to Beards Bush Bashing, the very first video of 2024. Happy New Year. I'm sure you're sick of people saying that, but well, this is my first video of the year, so here we are. Happy New Year. It's good to be here. Man, 2023. What a year. It was a bloody, it was a pretty damn good year for myself personally. I mean, I'm not going to go into all the details, but with the channel growth and whatnot, it was, I'm quite happy. I must admit, the uh, channel didn't grow from the videos I was expecting it to, but here, well, who am I to complain? Speaking of the channel, this video is just going to be a summary of last year and what's to come this year. So we're all on the same page. I'm gonna start off by reflecting on last year's content. Now, I must admit, it could have definitely been better. There's always room for improvement, but I just know for a fact that I can do better. So that's my goal this year in terms of the channel is to make better content and upload more frequently. I mean, you look, I've got a, got a little road mic going on now. I've already spent money to increase production quality. I'm going to give this a fair crack and I'm hoping that you guys are gonna be here for the ride to see myself improve. And as always, your tips, all that sort of stuff comes in handy. It helps me grow, helps me make better content for you guys. Now, in terms of the content, at the minute we are just doing like trial riding, trail riding on my WR400 because, well, I'm currently sitting in the patrol. There's no center console in front of me. The patrol is still in pieces. It is taking me a lot longer than what I uh, thought it was going to. But I mean, what car build doesn't blow out of proportion? You know what, you know what I mean? Now, I haven't done too, anything too fancy, like you see all the other Instagram builds and all the YouTube builds and whatnot. Uh, you know, full $15,000 superior suspension and all that sort of stuff. I haven't gone ahead and done that. All I have really done, if you look at the grand scheme of things, is not a lot. And it, um, it's getting to me, I must admit, the car's been off the road for eight plus months. And all I've done is I pulled the entire interior out from front to rear, everything out. There was nothing left on the inside of the car. Uh, just because I kept getting water inside and it wasn't through the door sills, so I was concerned there were holes in the floor. And that there were. There were rust holes all throughout the uh, inner, I wanna say inner door gutters, you know where the wiring harness runs beneath the doors? I don't know what the name is, but throughout the body there were rust holes um, that needed to be rectified. So I removed all the factory sound deadening with a 650 degree heat gun and a little scraper that my, uh, my boss gave me. And I was in, in the car for two days straight, just heating up the old sound deadening and scraping it off just to remove it all because I had full intentions of replacing it. With that being done, I sanded the floor back and predominantly the rust affected areas back to bare metal. So there was no nothing hidden, no surprises, nothing like that. Uh, when the main and the worst areas were isolated, I actually cut chunks of the floor out and welded new plating in to get rid of the rust completely. There was more rust than what I would have wanted, if I'm being honest with you, and it uh, affected me pretty badly because I love this car and I always want it to be in very nice condition. I mean, yes, I treat it like shit on the tracks, I get it, but I always come back and take care of it, do maintenance and whatnot. So seeing it in such a condition, even now where the interior is going back together, it's still, it's still a bit of a shock. I'm still not happy. Like, yes, I've made a lot of progress because once, uh, once I've sanded the floor, welded new plates in, you know, sanded back the, the bog, um, I've actually repainted the floor black with the Car Builders TXT um, spray, and that was great. Such a good product. I'm not sponsored or anything, I'm just saying it's such a good product. Loved it. So easy to work with. So I repainted the entire floor, and then I laid the Car Builders sound deadening. That was a mission. It was a lot harder than what I was expecting. I don't know what I expected, but it was a big job. Had uh, Kelly out here lending a hand. So once the sound deadening was all laid, thanks to the assistance of Kelly, I was 
unsure what the next step would be because I really wanted to increase its waterproof factor, like having so much rust throughout the car and so much water in the car at one period of time. I just don't want it to happen again. Granted, it's probably my fault, bog holes and whatnot, but there are, I won't go into detail. There were holes throughout the floor from tech screws and all that from whoever installed the gas when it was dual fuel, but I won't get into that. That's a whole different kettle of fish. So yeah, where was I? Once the sound deadening was installed, I was unsure if I wanted to do the insulation layer between the floor, sorry, the sound deadening and the, the flooring itself. Um, I decided not to. I just went ahead and got a brand new vinyl flooring kit from Truefit Carpets. Now, the product's great. The quality of the vinyl flooring is great. Like, it's, it's perfect. It's easy to work with to a point. Um, I was expecting it to be a lot more malleable, I will say. And I was expecting the True Fit like the fitment of the flooring to be a lot better. It was my understanding that I would just need to cut holes for the pedals and the center console and everything to, like within a bolt holes and whatnot, but that was not the case. I ended up just remolding the entire floor. Um, yes, you guys out there may have had a better experience and I could have done it completely wrong. I'm happy to admit that, but I'm happy with where it's sitting now. The floor from front to behind the rear seats is vinyl flooring, brand new vinyl flooring. Um, that's waterproof, so that's going to be a plus. With the new setup of the Patrol, I've decided to put this seat back in. I've, I'm removing my battery box, my custom-made stuff, like completely. I know I had full intentions of building a proper 12-volt setup on the passenger rear. Um, I have one video on the channel at the minute, but just disregard it. I'm not going any further with that set up whatsoever so what i'm doing is i'm going to be ripping my titan drawers out removing all that excess weight and i'm going to be using some uh ex-military like storage containers that my father donated to me so if dad if you're watching this thank you very much i really appreciate it um my plan is to have uh, a box on either side so you got your wheel wells here and there's going to be a box either side on my left left box at the back is gonna be my 12 volt setup. This is gonna be on an Anderson plug, so I could just unplug it, remove the entire thing from the car. So like a uh, go block on steroids, you know what I mean? The big battery boxes from Brad Ark. It's like one of them, but on steroids, because I'm gonna be able to store my cooking gear and all that sort of stuff, my camping gear in the remaining half of said army box. Now on the right hand side, it's gonna be recovery gear and you know, all the dirty shit which can also be removed without an issue. Other than that, all I'm doing is converting from auto hubs to manual hubs because I have had a serious issue with my hubs. They've been clicking full lock. I mean, not even just full lock, just as soon as you turn in four wheel drive, hectic clicking noises. And I've heard from many a people that the auto hubs on patrols are pretty fragile. And I learned that the hard way because one of them engaged on me whilst I was driving to Tullarook, believe it or not. So that one destroyed itself. So I'll be, yep, go on manual hubs. And on the same day, I will be changing my diff ratios from 3.5 to 4 threes. Now, I am currently running an LSD in the rear. It was a factory auto, factory auto lock? No, it was a factory locker that just shit the bed. Like the whole diff shit the bed. Fair enough, so I just chucked a tight LSD in there and that was doing the job, I was loving it. But now the opportunity arose for me to get a set of four threes in good condition for a day's labor. I didn't pay a cent. Uh, just pulled them out myself, chucked some three fives in replacement and then toodaloo on the way, you know what I mean? So I got a set of four threes sitting there. Now, whether or not I lock them while they're out and then throw them in, I don't know at this stage. I just want the car back on the road because I miss driving it, but other than that, it's just new bar work and rims, tires, and all that sort of stuff. Now the wheels and tires, you won't see on an upcoming video that I have planned because I'm yet to get the rubber. Oh well, moving on from this beautiful machine, the bike. The Honda XR350R project that I started late last year. First video done really well. I thoroughly enjoyed pulling it apart. I love the bike and I wanna get it done. But I'm at a standstill. Not only because I'm working on the patrol and want this done, it's taken my priority, 
but no one is assisting me with the motor. I've contacted countless businesses, um, look, saying if I supply the parts, which being a um, new Conrod, new piston, and all the piston rings and whatnot, can you press off the old Conrod and press on a new one and I'll just do the rest? Obviously, you need the cylinder reboard because I want to go five mil bigger but no one wants to do it. Everyone's saying, oh, your local bike shop will assist you with that, or I'm just getting no response whatsoever. It's always like, oh yeah, we'll give you a call back. Never happens, and you chase it up, and it just doesn't go, where, go anywhere. So the motor for the 350R is in pieces at work, like completely stripped. It's ready for someone to separate the crank, pull the con rod off and slap a new one on. That's, that's where it's at. I haven't filmed that because I've done it at work, but I haven't forgot about it and I'll want it done, but if I can't find anyone that's going to help me, assist me with this uh, engine, I might throw something else in it. I don't know what, I don't, yeah. If, ideas, please. If you wanna see something stupid go on the bike, by all means, maybe a Harley motor for, just for an example. I don't know, I'm just talking out my ass here. Moving on, yet again, the Falkenstein. Now, I don't know what's going to happen with that car. It's, I put a new diff in it uh, because I actually snapped the diff. Or well, not snapped the diff, I shredded the teeth off the crown. Uh, I thought I just snapped an axle, so I went up to my folks' place, we stripped it, pulled the axles out. The axles were completely fine. I tore three or four teeth off the crown. Um, and that's because the pinion is recessed too far. I think I've crushed the, I think it's like a crush washer or a crush crush bearing behind the pinion. Uh, I think that's crushed too far so the teeth aren't coming in contact correctly. It sounds like an easy fix, but I don't know if I'm going to fix it at this stage. Yeah, it's a great paddock bomb and I love it. I've spent money on it. I mean, the first videos of the car done exceptionally well, um, which I'm grateful for, but I don't know. I've got a trip planned for my birthday weekend, which is Coincidentally, Australia Day weekend. We're going up to Tullarock with a couple of mates. So it's going to be good. The car's going to be on the road by then. We're going to do some hectic tracks, test out new bar work. I won't have the bead locks on by then, but I don't care. I just want to drive the poor thing. It's been sitting here for too bloody long. Uh, the bike is at a standstill, massive standstill, until I can figure out a motor that's going in it or someone to assist me rebuilding the 350. I, I obviously want the original motor rebuilt and to go back in there, but whether or not that happens is a different story. And the Falcon, the condition of the Falcon, it runs, it drives, but it makes a hectic noise. And if I keep driving it the way it currently is, I'm just gonna shred another tiff and I don't wanna do that. So, to sum up, right? Well, first of all, I'm just gonna start, start off by saying cheers. Cheers to all of you out there that have watched my content and supported me to this point in time that have given me helpful comments like constructive criticism like hey mate this is what you can do to improve i love those type of comments helping me improve bloody great love it keep it up um, i'm always here i'm always willing to hear your constructive cre uh, feedback and that probably won't ever change I'm always wanting to improve my content and make it better for you guys to watch. It's hard when I'm obviously filming and editing the videos and then I get nothing back. Like, yeah, you watch the video and yeah, there's the like to dislike ratio and all that sort of stuff. I get that, but some some feedback would be nice every once in a while. Um, the car's close to finishing. The bike is nowhere near finished. The Falcon's on the back burner until we determine what the process is, if this project's gonna go ahead or if it's not. Um, but yeah, here's to you guys, here's to 2024. I'm going to try and up my content, like I said earlier, in terms of production quant uh, quality and quantity. So it should be a good year. Oh well, happy new year guys, and I'll uh, see you all in the next video. Cheers.